I'm going to try to explain this. Trust me, there are many more channels and many more people that you can listen to that are much more of an authority figure on this than me. But I'm still going to go for it and I'm still going to explain my way of thinking behind making the move that I made today. Because if it's someone new that has started trading or considering training, trading or has considered has decided not to because you assume that people can't make money trading people making money trading every day and so this is a strategy that i use consistently to make a few dollars here and there it all depends on when you apply it because you, you have to put it into context like if you're more disciplined then you only wait for significant moments and if you're less disciplined and this is when you're more likely to lose money then you take a bigger chance and it's a smaller opportunity to make a move like this and you know it may work out and it may not so here is you have the micro and the macro the macro is the big picture overall the micro is the smaller things so we're looking at tan which is alternative energy as an which means a bunch of companies are represented in this envelope, in this structure that's designed to move this way. It's designed to represent a bunch of companies. So instead of having to choose one company at the right time and for you know whatever reason, whatever faith you have in the company, and then they blow up in your face, all your eggs are not in that basket of that company. You, you're, you can do uh, themed ETFs. And this one is all the companies that are in the alternative energy space. So the macro is, do you think alternative energy is going to continue to become adopted? If your answer is yes, then you keep moving. But it probably made another 52, I mean, another, yeah, another all-time high today. I'm pretty sure. If not, it did yesterday. Mostly everything has gone up except alternative energy. So that's a macro. Now, why is that? Well, you know, a lot of these companies represented are not profitable for one. But two, you got to look at it price of a barrel of oil has gone down significantly. Now, I don't know if it's up today or the last few days, but generally speaking, oil is down. And when you think about it, you have the sentiment and you have of retail investors. These are people at the pump who might be investing in stocks and what have you. If oil is down, their fuel prices are down, their mindset, they're going to buy a new car and everything. They're okay with buying gas, it, you know, but if oil prices go up and the price of the pump goes up then now all of a sudden they're like man you know next time i'm getting a hybrid or i'm getting an ev you know so then that becomes a dominant mindset well okay you combine that with the people who are investing if those same people with that mindset are buying stocks they're going to buy alternative energy companies EV companies, wind energy, solar. So you see the psychology? You're influenced by how you feel about things. Man, I hate oil, man. I'm Everybody got to feel this way. I'm buying, you see? But that ain't the case because oil is down. So it's the opposite. Like, man, I thought oil was about to be through the roof for the rest of my life. Man, you know, we still got time to enjoy this gas-powered stuff and uh, traditional power. So you see what I'm saying? That's over time that being the situation over time, then you can easily see how now those companies are not generating the revenue or the profit because now they can't do things at scale. So there's less profit. So now they got to pay more. And, you know, so now the value of the companies just go down. So now it is a reinforced reason for not investing. The companies are doing worse on earnings because the demand is lower, the profit is lower. The sentiment about alternative energy is benign because oil is cheap. You see what I'm saying? But let me ask you this. Now we look looking at the micro uh, macro again. If do you think the price of, of a barrel of oil is going to go up, then you know that the sentiment is going to change about alternative energy, even if it's temporary. And and if you think alternative energy over time is simply going to continue to be adapted more and more, adopted more and more then you know over time, as long as the company can stay in business, and thus the ETF as opposed to picking a particular company, then eventually the value of these companies is going to rise. And when it becomes more and more favored, then the, the stock price of that ETF is going to go up. Right. If you can agree, then you see where I'm coming from. So now the reality is, is that TAN ETF is at a 52 week low. Like I said, it's about the only thing that hasn't moved. Now two things are going to happen. One, 
when the price of oil goes up, the ETF is going to go up. The other thing is when people feel like, and we're getting close in my opinion, everything else, the value is so high and extended, like they're going to be like, well, what's left that we can invest in that hasn't, that's cheap in valuation right now. It hasn't moved with everything else. Everything else is expensive because the PE ratio, every way you can measure it, I'm generalizing because, you know, like different things that has an expectancy of extensive growth over a short period or a couple of years, let's say in video cycle, you might be able to justify the value right now, but how about five years from now? I have no idea. And then you, and it's probably gonna slow down because they're not gonna, probably not gonna be the only alternative and you don't know how things are going to shift. So it becomes a point where people, investors, retail and Wall Street, you know, hedge funds, all that, they, they feel like, hey, this is too expensive. We can't buy Nvidia at this price. Now you're looking for something else to invest in. Well, where is the best opportunity right now? What's so cheap right now that it's a great value? Like it can't go down, but so much more. The, lo the downside is this much. The upside is this much. That's when you look at the risk and reward potential. So now you got, in my opinion, two tailwinds when you looking at alternative energy. Now I didn't actually invest in alternative energy. My, my money went toward a trade. So I got options. I got 10 contracts of options, which are at the, at the 52 week low. Real, It was real close. So it was at the 52 week low already, but I put it like five cents below that. Just hoping that it would just, you know, dip momentarily. And I just looked at it before I took off to come over here and get my stuff. I got it. It dipped. And it's already up 9%. So that's the strategy that I'm talking about is like, you know, I wouldn't mind. I would love to have it. If I can get it at this price, I would love to have it. So I'll set a price just like I'm talking about. Tell, give the broker, broker your, your number. You never know if you're going to take it unless you ask for it. I'll set that price. You know, it might look kind of ridiculous, but sometimes the market just... So let's say a huge head fund decides to, hey man, I'm dumping all of this, all of these shares of this ETF. By them doing that, it will drive the price down momentarily. And then as soon as they finish selling everything that they want to sell, you know, the order book is done and back up to where it was. I don't know if that's what happened today, but I, what I know is I was able to grab the shares of, I was able to grab the contracts of TAN for a nice little dip and now it's up already the same day at nine percent which only got 10 contracts you know I'm not gonna get rich but again i'm not gonna sell it. i could sell it today and that's nine percent on the money but if they don't expire until and then I, i've actually forgot they either expire i think december 2025 or january of 2026 you know the closer you get to that date then the better price you better get on the contract you just gotta pay more attention and know how you're getting it and you need to take into account more than just the price at that particular time like what sector is this representing where do they sit in the economy in the culture what's what's the trends related to the companies represented by this etf or the company direct that you do and now i'm about to lose some money on united wholesale which i was up something like 30 percent at one point but I did not sell it because I thought I had more time. So I already, and that was ridiculous because I already felt that the stock price for the company was a little rich. I, like, I don't even know. I expect home values, I mean, mortgage companies are going to do better with the interest rates down, but geez, not going to go crazy like a tech company. So anyway, I'm underwater in that, but I think it's, I still got, I think I still got a chance of getting back out of there unscathed. But you know, there are worse things to take to do with your money that are more ordinary, you know, that I was like 95% sure that I could uh, profit from. And I used the other strategy too that I was telling you about where at first I said 10 contracts, but at first I put in the order for 10 contracts, but then I went back, I canceled that order and I made the order for what? How many? 11 contracts. Why? because I might sell the other 10 premature and just hold on to the one. So if it jumps up a lot, and then I'm gonna pay attention to the news and I'm gonna be looking at oil price, probably by the end of this year, maybe, when I'm thinking oil price is gonna go up or during next summer, then I'll sell those 10 and just let the one ride. And I should make enough money off of those 10 to pay for that one and have extra money in profit. 
that's that's the plan we'll see how that works out so there you have it that's my whole spiel that's my whole way of thinking that's a strategy that i use and like i said when i'm disciplined it works out pretty well like with the uwm i wasn't disciplined because i already felt that it was overextended when i bought it i just you know looking at the technical charge that went down so much and the mo momentum was so strong the sentiment was up there and I figured I had time to profit and I was supposed to actually be selling it. I was supposed to just made a quick flip because of what I was thinking about it in the big picture. But I second guessed myself. I said, well, I'm missing something that everybody else is seeing. So I'll hold on to it a little while longer and try to make a little bit more off of it. Bad decision. So it's interesting. It's very interesting. Trading and investing too. But trading especially teaches you a lot about psychology. As long as you're able to self-reflect and question your decisions and your way of looking at things and how you assess things and your thought process as long as you're willing to do that and admit when you are wrong in the choices that you make with regards to investing you'll learn a lot about yourself and you will improve your decision making process you're going to improve your discipline you're going to improve improve the faith you have in your own thoughts and judgment and your ability to derive information from what you are observing in the market and in the economy and in your ability to assess the psychology of people in mass, you know, society. It's, uh, it's very interesting. And I think that's why it's addictive. So I'm addicted to trucking. I'm addicted to trading. I'm addicted to investing. Let's go. That could be worst thing.